Hey, Owen here, and today I'm going to be building, but not painting, that'll come in a later video, the 135th scale Tamiya Sherman Firefly. Before starting, I washed all plastic parts in warm soapy water and photo etch parts in white spirit. The road wheels were well moulded except for a small seam around the tyre which I sanded down. There were 12 road wheels to build in total. The wheels and suspension were all free moving which is nice for those who like moving parts. Three sets of right and left side suspension had to be made. I had done some rough pre-shading on the parts as I wouldn't be able to paint them when assembled. Hardly any of the parts required glue and all the fittings were good. The drive sprockets and idler wheels had small washers to put inside them which allowed them to turn freely. The detail and fit was excellent and again I had done some rough pre-shading. The lower hull parts fitted well however I didn't leave enough room for the horizontal side pieces to slide in as you'll see in a minute. One millimetre holes were drilled into the back piece with a pin vise and it was secured in place with masking tape while the glue dried. Here you can see I had a problem with the side pieces. Luckily the glue had not fully dried by this point and I was able to force them in under the engine bulkhead wall. I attached photo etch parts with PVA glue. I would definitely recommend getting some good modelling tweezers for this kit as I struggled with my cheap rubbish ones. I used a pair of pliers to bend the photo etch parts into shape for the smoke discharger. Special sets are available to help you shape photo etch parts more accurately. The instructions weren't very clear as to where to attach the smoke discharger and I only realised later in the build that the instructions were indicating to under the towing hook as opposed to on top of it. The differential cover had a really nice texture and little serial numbers moulded onto it. As I knew I was going to be making painting and marking scheme A, I drilled through the holes labelled on the instructions for that scheme. For other schemes this may be different, so make sure you consult the instructions carefully. I added most of the small parts to the hull, but left off any of the tools so I could paint them separately and therefore more easily.
I thought it was a nice touch that the barrel holder is able to move. I glued down one hinge, and then, when the glue had fully set, put the holder in place and then glued on the second hinge. Photo-etch parts were attached to the outside of the air intakes with PVA glue. I had to be very careful as I found these parts extremely easy to damage. Photo-etch or plastic covers could be put over the lights. I decided to use the photo-etch parts. The sprue included a handy tool for shaping the photo-etch correctly. The headlights include clear plastic lenses which I will add after the model has been painted. Again, I went with the photo etch headlight covers instead of the plastic ones and secured them in place with PVA glue. The driver's hatch came with the parts to detail the inside, so the hatch can be built in an open position. Clear plastic versions of the periscopes are included in the kit, but I'm securing the opaque versions in place temporarily with blue tack until after the kit has been painted. Tiny little hinges mean that the driver's hatch doesn't have to be glued in place. Some of these parts I'm adding now are only for the painting and marking scheme A. Again, make sure that you check the instructions carefully when you are building this model. The kit comes with the option of putting sand shields over the tracks. I decided not to use these so instead I was required to add these photo etch parts which I initially put in the wrong place and, as you'll see, I end up with an overhang at the end. This was later corrected as shown. Depending on which scheme you are making, this radio box is assembled with different parts so make sure you check the instructions carefully. Plastic washers, included with the kit, are to be put into the hinges on the gun to ensure that it moves smoothly. The gun barrel had quite a prominent join seam along its length which required sanding. On the turret I again temporarily added the opaque periscopes to be replaced with the clear ones after the kit is painted. The searchlight comes with a clear lens which I will add after I've painted the kit. The commander's hatch can be built in an open position and there is some nice detail on the inside to show off. The same goes for the loader's hatch, however I accidentally snapped the thin support rod that holds it open so I had to glue it shut. The commander figure had some nice detail but there were some bad mould seam lines around the edge of him. Each track comes in two parts which can be glued together with normal poly cement glue. I did not attach the tracks at this point as it would make the kit easier to paint. Finally, some tiny photo etch handles were attached to the side of the turret and the build was complete. So here is the finished build. I honestly think that this has been 
the best kit I have built simply because the parts have all fitted so perfectly. I haven't had to use any filler. There's only been a bit of sanding along the gun barrel and things, but it was nothing major. I also think the detail both molded onto the plastic and also in the photo etch is really good. And the great thing is it has a good balance. So there's enough detail to make it look good, but not so much detail that it takes you ages to build. So for example, this took me about three or four days to make. One thing that I really love is all the moving parts like the suspension. I think they're a really great feature. Um, but for that reason, it is quite complex and difficult at times. And so I would only recommend this kit to more advanced modelers. So anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And I'll see you next time in the painting video, which is up next.